All right, guys. Hello, 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 everybody. I'm just bringing some joy and cheer to your homes right now. All right, kids. So if you're looking on, join in with me as we sing a few Christmas choruses. Nothing much, just a little thing to lighten up the season a little bit to get you in this Christmas spirit to remember the reason why we are here, the reason why we celebrate Christmas is always and only because of Jesus Christ, all right? So let's get started. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Christmas songs. I know there's a lot more that you all may know. So coming up in the next few videos, I'll try to do a few familiar ones that we all might know, right? But for now, thank you so much for singing. Thank you so much for tuning in and just look forward to the lesson. Bye! guys so i hope you all are ready for the lesson today um we are going to continue speaking on the lines of the man named joshua now we know joshua would have taken over from moses when moses had passed away right god had appointed joshua to lead the israelites we would have recently learned about joshua and his spies and then last week we would have learned about joshua and his tribe and his army and the walls of Jericho. Today, we're going to learn about how the sun stood still for Joshua and his army. Now, the place that Joshua and his army, where they were camping out, there were five kings that ruled the land. All right? So, there were five kings that ruled the land. Remember how many kings there were? How many? Five. That's right. Now, these kings, they had no love for God and no love for the God of Joshua. Furthermore, so they were wicked people. They were not nice. 
and they decided to conspire against Joshua or to come up with a plan against Joshua and the Israelites because they knew that Joshua, together with some people from the land of Gibeon, right? They knew that the Israelites, together with these people, could overthrow them and their rulership. So here's what they were going to do. The kings, all five of them, decided to make a plan to fight the people of Gibeon. All right? So when the people of Gibeon found out that these five kings wanted to fight them and the people of their land, they sent a message to Joshua asking him to come to help them to save them from this war that was about to happen. So when Joshua heard this message, he gathered his army to go to fight. Joshua and his army traveled all night to go to the place where the Gibeonites were to fight this battle. And so the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. I will help you fight this battle. I will help you beat them. And so Joshua and his army, the Israelites, marched all night long to get to the place where the battle was going to take place. And guess what? The king was surprised. He was not expecting the Israelites to come to fight. So we know that God was on Joshua's side. All along, we have been seeing that God is on Joshua's side. He had appointed Joshua. God put this man in place to lead the Israelites at this point, right? So God was in control. He already told them to not be afraid. So Joshua and his army went forward, surprised the king, and went into battle. When the king saw Joshua and his army, they began to run away. They ran away. And guess what happened? So when the army started to run away now, because they were afraid of Joshua and his army, because they knew God was on Joshua's side, they began to run away. And God sent a hailstorm. Now hail is like a type of ice. We don't see that here in Trinidad. But um, it's probably similar to snow. I've never seen it. But according to research, it's something like snow, but bigger. Right? So it was hard. And it was coming down from the heavens. So imagine all these stones, hail stones of ice coming down and killing some of the king's men and some of the kings as well. Imagine this happening. Imagine seeing this before your very eyes. Now, not because the king and his army were running away meant that the battle was over. Eh? The battle was far from over. It wasn't over as yet. Joshua prayed and he asked God for some more time. He prayed and he asked God for the sun and the moon to stand still in the sky. And guess what happened? God again in all his glory, in all his might, caused the sun to stand still for almost a day. Imagine that. He is the creator of all creation. He made the sun, the moon, the stars. If he tells the sun to stand still, the sun will stand still. If he tells the moon to stand still, the moon will stand still. There is nothing too big that we can ask God to do and he's unable to do it. God, our God, is able to do everything and anything. He made the sun, he made the moon, he made the stars, he made it all. And imagine he made the sun to stand still for Joshua and his army to continue fighting and to have victory in their battle. So at this point, nothing like this had ever happened before. This probably was the first time ever in the history of the world the sun was standing still. And just imagine, imagine experiencing that. I mean, yes, when God says that he's going to do something, we know that he's going to do it. But just imagine experiencing it, being in the moment. I mean, after all this had happened, Joshua and the Israelites, they won the battle and they went back to where they were staying or camping in Gilgal. So imagine they returning, sitting there and just thinking about what God had just done for them. Isn't it amazing? God is so good. He is so great. He is so amazing. Kids, guys, everybody, there is nothing that we can ask God to do for us that is too big. There's nothing, it, it's just simply impossible for him to not be able to do something for us. Imagine he's start having the sun stand still so the Israelites and Joshua and his army can win this battle. And that's something so big. Imagine the little things that we are asking God for. And we are thinking that it's something so big. And it's something so small in the eyes of God. You know, 
We just need to trust him and know that God is able to do it. If he says that he's going to do it for us, he's going to do it. He told Joshua and the army not to be afraid. They were not afraid. They went into battle. Yes, it was five kings and their armies. But who are they against God? He is all powerful and we learned that recently. He's all powerful. There is nothing that he cannot do for us tonight as long as we obey him. That's it, full stop. So at the end of the day, we need to remember there is nothing too big for our God to do. There is nothing too big for him to do. We might think it to be something big and at the end of the day, really and truly, it's nothing for God. He is our all in all. He did everything. He created everything all for us. So at this, there is nothing that we cannot do without him. Okay, guys. So I hope you all learned something from the lesson today, right? Bottom line is, remember, there is nothing too big that we can ask God to do and he's unable to do it. He can do anything and he can do everything, all right? Nice. So right now we'll get into our scripture and our scripture is taken from Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. All right. So look in your Bibles, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. And it says, have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Right? I'll say it one more time. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, Have I not commanded thee, Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Alright? So I hope... You all enjoyed the lesson today. Take the time, read the scripture, memorize it. Remember to never be afraid. Remember to never be afraid to ask God for anything because he's able to do everything and anything that we ask him for. Stay covered under the blood of Jesus. Listen to your parents, mommy, daddy, bigger sister, bigger brother. Listen, all right? Be obedient. We've learned about obedience. So listen to them and you all stay safe. And stick up under the precious blood of Jesus. Okay guys, so for our craft today, we're going to be making the sun. Just like the one that stood still. So here's what you're going to need. You need some glue. A scissor. Pencil a pen or marker, and two sheets of paper, yellow and orange. So firstly, on your yellow piece of paper, you take your pencil and you draw the best circle that you can possibly draw. If you need something to help you draw that circle, like a saucer or whatever circular item that you have, you can go ahead and do that, right? Right, so I'm trying it freehand. And this is what my circle looks like. So I'm going to go ahead, take my scissor, and cut my circle out. Right, so we're all just learning here, right? The circle doesn't have to be perfect. All right. So there I have my circle. Next I'm going to take my orange piece of paper and cut it down the middle. When I do that, I'm going to then make triangles out of the rectangular piece that I have. Right, so these are how many rectangular pieces that I have, right? All right, so next I'm going to take my glue, pass it at the edge of my paper, stick it around my sun, just like this. Right. 
And you keep doing that until you've done all parts of it. Alright, so I'm about to stick the last piece. Alright, so this is what my son looks like. So, next, let me just fix this piece right here. Okay. Next, we're going to take our pen or marker and we're going to write at the center of our sun. So, we're going to write, the sun stood still. And at the middle of it, we want to write our scripture verse for today. All right. And just at the bottom of it, we're going to write a little note. There is nothing too big for God to do. All right. So Joshua 1, 9, there is nothing too big for God to do. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoy the craft. Soon and very soon, I guess we will be meeting up. I don't know when that will be. But until then, stay covered, stay blessed. I pray that you all and your families, you lack nothing in this season. I pray that God continues to provide for you all anything you need in this life. You just look to God and He is able to do it for us. And He is able to provide anything that our heart desires, right? So, from us at Jesus Resurrection Life Ministries to you, we want to wish you all the best in this season. Um, it's not Christmas as yet, but for now, all the best. We love you and we miss you and we look forward to seeing you very, very soon, alright? See you all next time. Bye-bye.